in this video we will be discussing the concept of rotating magnetic field in three phase induction motors so i am mohan bs working as assistant professor in department of triple e sjbit so a circle we know it's it's a 360 degree so by what angle can we divide it into three equal parts or assume a cake and i want this cake to be given to three people in such a way that you know i have divided it equally so at what angle should i cut if your answer is 120 degree you are right so i'll be cutting the cake by 120 degree each okay so i'm taking this as one voltage that is vr so as we have seen in single phase circuit the equations for voltage vr or v is equal to vm sin omega t now as i said 120 degree so this 120 degrees we have one more voltage that is vy the second phase which is given as vm sin theta or omega t minus 120 degree now why have i written here one minus 120 degree so as we rotate it in clockwise v assign is this as negative value not positive value okay and as we rotate it in clockwise direction the vectors we are right we associate that with positive angles so we as we rotate the vectors in clockwise it is negative as we rotate the vectors in anti clockwise it is positive so thus this third angle that is a third voltage that is vb is equal to vm sin omega t minus 240 so as you can see this angle until here is minus 120 and this is minus 240 i can also write this as plus 120 if i see that in anti clockwise direction so this angle is plus 120 and from this angle to this point is minus 240 degrees now so these are the three vectors for phase r phase y and phase b and the respected equation as vm sin omega t or sin theta similarly this is minus 120 as we can write here from clockwise direction or with respect to uh, anti clockwise we can write this as plus 240 and similarly for uh, vb it is minus 120 so this angle is actually called as this angle actually becomes minus 240 or if we write in clockwise in anti clockwise direction this becomes plus 120 degrees so now generalizing the equations so we can take omega t as theta and we can say vr is equal to vm sin omega t vy is omega t so theta minus 120 and vb as theta minus 240 similarly the respect to currents three phase currents as ir iy and ib and similarly those three fluxes responsible because of the flow of current to the state are windings respectively as phi r phi y and phi b so we have seen that at any instant we will have three different fluxes in the state are winding we will have three different fluxes but at any instant we will have the resultant flux that is called as state that is called as state are flux or rotating magnetic field or resultant flux yeah that you have seen in the working principle of three phase induction motor now so taking down the voltages and representing with respect to the fluxes phi r phi y and phi b which also have a phase difference of 120 degree each so let's see the concept of rotating magnetic field in three phase induction motor so the three fluxes as discussed phi m sin omega sin omega d or sin theta phi y sin theta minus 240 phi b sin theta minus 240 degree so phi y is minus 120 phi b is minus 240 degrees so the resultant flux phi t is given as summation of all the three fluxes at any instant so let's take uh, uh, three different cases so case 1 i am assuming that at theta is equal to 0 so substituting theta is equal to 0 in equation 1 and 2 and equation 1 2 and 3 at three at three at these three places what do we get so we get phi r as 0 and here we get minus 120 because this place is substituted by 0 and this we substitute as zeros thus we get minus 240 so what is sin 120 and what is sin minus 240 so sin minus 120 is minus root 3 by 2 sin minus 240 is plus 
root 3 by 2 that into 5m and here also this into 5m so this entire part that is sin sin minus 120 is minus root 3 by 2 and minus 240 is plus root 3 by 2 thus we have got 5r as 0 5y as minus 5m root 3 by 2 and 5b as 5m root 3 by 2 right so now we are interested in the rewriting the equations here as, as soon and we are interested in these two vectors 5b and minus 5y I repeat 5b and minus 5y so where do we have 5b so yes you are clear you can see that here we have 5b but where do we have minus 5y so we have here plus 5y but where do we have the vector minus 5y so this is our positive vector 5y as I told we we will we'll see with respect to this vector minus 5y so how do I get the vector minus 5y so I'll represent that 5y in opposite direction and say that this is minus 5y and what was our resultant vector what was our resultant so our resultant equation was what was our resultant equation so if you see the 5t 5t was nothing but 5r plus 5y plus 5b and we saw in the equation that 5r is going to 0 here and all that we have is left out with is minus 5y and plus 5b so we need to vectorly add these two so we have here minus 5y and here we have 5b so let us add these two vectors yes and this is the resultant 5t which is standing on y axis exactly on y axis now so taking this uh, drawing another perpendicular from 5y to 5b so taking only this part to solve leaving it as a b and o now what is this angle now we know that this angle is what is the angle between these two so what is this actually so this is actually a phi r and what is this this is actually phi b so the angle between any two faces is actually 120 degree so as I say bisect this equally what would this angle become so right I hope you have understood if I bisect the 120 degrees how I have, how I have I bisected or which vector is bisecting minus 5y is bisecting these two vectors so then what does this angle become it becomes 60 degree right so and what is this angle this angle is also 60 degree and if I further bisect I'll get the angle as 30 degrees so I hope you have clear that angle between AOB is 30 degrees right and angle between AO 5y is also 30 degrees now so from this triangle what is cos theta so cos theta so we know it is based by hypotenuse which is nothing but OA by OB substitute what is cos 30 cos 30 is root 3 by 2 what is OA now you can see that this is the perpendicular right O phi t is your resultant flux and OA is exactly half so we can say that OA is nothing but phi t by 2 so OA is what phi t by 2 and what is OB OB is a vector for phi b right so substituting phi b now what is the value of phi b I'll substitute here the value of phi b here so which is nothing but phi m root 3 by 2 so I hope you've understood so what is OB OB is nothing but what is OB OB is nothing but phi b and then what is the value of phi b if you see here the value of phi b is the value of phi b is nothing but phi m root 3 by 2 now if I simplify this what do I get so if I simplify this I get my resultant answer as 1.5 phi m is equal to phi t or my resultant flux phi t for case 1 is 1 1.5 times of phi m now what is phi m phi m is nothing but the maximum flux okay phi m is what is phi m phi m is the maximum flux so for case 1 we have got resultant flux is 1.5 times of 5m so let's see for case 2 so case 2 let us take an angle of 60 degree substituting theta is equal to 60 in equation 1 2 and 3 respectively what do we get now here theta is replaced by 60 so we get sin 60 into 5m as 5m root 3 by 2 sin 60 minus 120 is minus 60 so what is sin minus 60 we get minus root 3 by 2 
and what is sine minus 180 it is 0 I hope you have understood this step now the steps are same so now we are concentrating on these two vectors which are those two vectors phi y and minus phi phi r and minus phi y so how do I write where is my vector phi r so my vector phi r is here so where is my vector minus phi y so I have plus phi y so let us see how do we get minus phi y now we need to add so what is what is our resultant flux phi t is nothing but phi r plus phi y plus phi b now out of these three which is going to zero phi b is going to zero right so what is left out we have phi r and minus phi y so please understand this is not negative it's a vector so vectorly we have to add them so how do we add them summation of these two that is phi r and phi y so we get our resultant flux here so drawing another perpendicular from phi r to minus phi y taking this shaded area to find what is phi t and then what is this angle I hope you've understood from the previous slide that this angle is also 30 degrees now what is cos 30 cos 30 is again OA by OB A by OB now what is cos 30 cos 30 is nothing but root 3 by 2 right and what is OA so this is OA now this entire perpendicular line is nothing but OT and OA is half of OT next what is OB so if you see this line is OB and what is OB OB is nothing but minus 5y and what is minus 5y minus 5y is nothing but 5m root 3 by 2 so in this place 5y I'll be substituting minus that is sorry I'll be substituting 5m root 3 by 2 now solving this we get again phi t which is equal to 1.5 times of 5m if you ask me sir these steps are you know repeating for the, in the last slide should we write yes each time for each cases you have to write these steps which are common now the third case I'll be quick here theta is 120 so if you see if you substitute and solve phi r we get phi m root 3 by 2 phi y goes to 0 phi b is minus phi m root 3 by 2 so we are concentrating on these two vectors that is phi r and phi minus phi b so phi y goes to 0 so what is our resultant vector phi t it is phi r plus phi y plus phi b now here which is going to 0 phi y is going to 0 and we need to vectorly add the vector minus phi r, phi, phi r and minus phi b so where is minus phi b so draw a vector in opposite direction to phi b is minus phi b now add phi r and minus phi b and this is the resultant flux again drawing another perpendicular from minus phi b to phi r labeling them and what is this angle is 30 degrees now from this triangle what is cos 30 so cos 30 is nothing but base by hypotenuse which is oa by ob and we have seen these steps earlier i will not repeat so you can see that the final answer is still same as the previous two cases so phi t is 1.5 times of phi m I hope you've I hope you've analyzed or visualized that first phi t we had along y-axis this was phi t and the second phi t we had along first quadrant somewhere here and the third one we have in the fourth quadrant so if you see that as we as we progress from 0 degrees to the third case 120 degrees so this was for 0 degree this was for 60 and this is for 120 degrees you can see the resultant flux is actually rotating in clockwise direction I repeat for case 0 it was here along y for case 60 it was in first quadrant in case 120 for case, case 3 taking there as 120 we have in fourth quadrant so you can see at each instant every second the flux is actually rotating in clockwise direction thus we call this as rotating magnetic field why because the field is actually rotating that's why we have labeled so now why is it rotating in clockwise direction so please understand that our phase sequence we have chosen as r y and b so what is phase sequence this i'll make a separate video there you can understand as of now you understand the phase sequence assumed here is r y b and how does this rotate in anti-clockwise direction you have to take any other phase sequence for example if i take the phase sequence as r b y then 
the RMF will rotate in anti-clockwise direction. So assuming the phase sequence RYB, the RMF is rotating in clockwise direction. If I change my phase sequence to RBY, I'll have the RMF rotating in anti-clockwise direction. So for the phase sequence, I'll, I'll be posting another video. So please do refer to that video. Thus, one can see that the total flux or resultant flux is 1.5 times of maximum flux. Thank you for watching the video. So please do subscribe our YouTube channel to enhance your knowledge further.